Welcome, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 15th, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Dew, giving you a look at space weather, world weather, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Looking at the last 48 hours of sun imagery, 304 angstroms, not too much to talk about. No major CMEs or solar flares thwarted our way. Only thing we're dealing with is the coronal hole, which we've been watching come into that Earth-facing position over the past three days. Looking at incoming imagery, as you can see, pretty quiet. A few plasma filaments erecting from the cresting limb. But other than that, it's only the coronal hole that we're dealing with right now, which has already brought our geomagnetic activity up to a kp5 so that's over 500 kilometers per second looking at outgoing imagery here both sunspots that are visible seem to be pretty stable for the moment this is all thanks to solar dynamics observatory providing these images for us we're going to be watching this region the southern region cresting multi-spectrum you can really see all of the activity even from the backside with those wavelengths. This one here, you can really see the coronal hole, which is now in an Earth-facing position and already affecting our planet. Increased solar wind speeds, another one building in behind it, Southern Hemisphere. Looking at Iswa, still only major CME that ejected was on the backside of the sun towards Mercury. And we are in the middle of the coronal hole wind stream right now, which was that yellow and red line heading towards the yellow planet. Geomagnetic activity brought up to KP4 has since been brought up to KP5 over 500 kilometers per second. No major flares to report and solar proton flux remains low. Looking at a real time solar wind, look at that 526 kilometers per second. Since then, it has already jumped up to almost 600 kilometers per second. You can see just in the last hour or two, that dramatic increase as we were expecting the wind stream from the coronal hole. Having a look at our pressure, see what it looks like, the magnetosphere maps. And we will see an increase in seismicity throughout this coronal hole wind stream. Looking at our wind speeds here, and we've already seen an increase, 6.3 Iran yesterday, 6.0 in Indian Ocean. Looking at our Schumann resonance for today, a power of 25. Healthy little spike there in the last hour or two. Amplitude of 25, quality of 11.9. Looking at earthquakes the last 24 hours around the world, we're going to start out here. South of Madagascar, Indian Plate, down into the Antarctic Plate, South Indian Ocean saw 6.0, followed by some pretty strong aftershocks, ranging from 4.7 to 5.3 throughout the day today. And just north of that, through the Arabian Plate, yesterday started off with a 6.3 earthquake, and you've seen many aftershocks since then looking at about 15 aftershocks in the region and around the epicenter of the 6.3 original one. Bandar Abbas, Iran was the culprit, followed by another 6.0 later on. Very active region, to say the least, as well very active through the Atlantic Plate, Mid-Atlantic Ridge, reporting all these earthquakes yesterday. South America seeing some activity today from Chile and northward to Calima and as well as San Antonio de la Cobros, 207 kilometer depth. It's about the deepest earthquake today. West Chile rise seeing some activity and as well southern east Pacific Ridge 5.6 pretty sizable earthquake for that region. Into Fiji now. It's been pretty quiet today. Not much to report. These were from yesterday. Not much in the region for today. Indonesia and westward towards Krakatoa. Minor earthquakes. 
5.0 there, Hulan, Taiwan yesterday. Let's just get to the last 24 hours quickly. As you can see there, 4.9 in Nishinashima. And as well, activity coming back to Alaska. 4.4 here in Akyok, Alaska at a 10 kilometer depth. Across the U.S., no major earthquakes to report. La Libertad, 4.2. Parkfield, California, 3.3. No major swarms nor notable earthquakes through the region. Caribbean plate, pretty quiet as per usual. Having a look at the last seven days around the world. All of the major earthquakes. This is all 2.0 and greater. Right now, USGS is reporting 270 earthquakes the last 24 hours. This new activity is a little bit concerning south of Madagascar, watching for a couple of volcanoes to possibly awaken again just north of there, Mayotte, and as well Reunion Island. Let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent volcanoes getting updated, Sabankaya in Peru, Semeru, Indonesia, Reventador in Ecuador, La Palma in Spain, of course, still going, Nevada de Ruiz, Colombia, Sangay in Ecuador, Swiss in Ajima, Japan, Fuego in Guatemala. And as well, Semis Napochnoi, United States, Popo in Mexico, Karamiski in Russia, Nevada de Chilean in Chile. So that's both 13 volcanoes getting updated today. Looking at satellite imagery, we're still seeing this atmospheric river of moisture heading into parts of BC, and as well winter stormy conditions through central Alberta, as well the United States, northwestern Washington and Oregon. They've been pounded by rain over the last little bit, and it's not going to stop. BC declaring a state emergency in some low-lying areas off the Fraser River. This is what some people were driving into as Highway 5 was closed down through BC. Towards Mount Hope. Looking at a couple pictures from Twitter and Facebook, mudslides and rock slides have closed, have closed major highways in southern BC amidst heavy rain in the region. Highway 5 is closed between Hope and Merritt. Wow, thoughts and prayers going out to everybody there. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of people evacuating their homes right now. Storms heading through Paraguay and Brazil, as forecasted here with morning dew. And as well, storms through Europe, Central Europe from that low pressure system just west of Italy. Storms still going through India. And as well through Thailand, North and South Sumatra. Let's get into the five-day forecast brought to you by MediaWorth and DailyEventsWorldwide.com. Please check out that website as it is up and going. Lots of information there. Having a look at the five-day forecast, starting off here, home base, Brantford, Ontario, as we're going to see some warm temps move in up to Wednesday with rain behind this big system that moved eastward out of Alberta. But then watch for cold temperatures to swing in quickly after that little jump of warm temperatures, high-pressure ridge building in. Overlooking the West Coast, big winter storm here will be affecting Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and into Ontario and Quebec. So winter storm sweeping across the Canadian nation this week. And lots of rain still continuing heading into Vancouver and towards the border with the United States into Washington. Watch for this system to move in later in the week. Friday to Saturday and then cold temperatures moving in behind that and a pretty vigorous system as well in the Pacific Ocean heading into Alaska. Stay tuned for daily full weather forecasts brought to you by dailyeventsworldwide.com. Having a look over the Atlantic Ocean, low pressure system now grinding up into Iceland and Greenland, overlooking Europe, low pressure system out of the Mediterranean seems to be, will get dried out, high pressure ridge building in. 
But then we've got this massive low moving into parts of Eastern Europe and will affect most of Eastern and Central as it's going to be funneling down some pretty cold temperatures and lots of snow. Overlooking Asia, high pressure ridge building in late week will bring some extreme cold temperatures to parts of Upper Mongolia. And down into Nepal, Tibetan Plateau. You're going to be looking at some really extreme cold temperatures in the next few days. No major system is affecting Southeast Asia or Japan this week. Most of them are out in the ocean and pretty strong. Deep lower level troughs. Big system here spinning into Russia, Kamchatka this week. Watch for heavy snow amounts to come out of there. Overlooking the Pacific Ocean, you can see vigorous systems and very large ones heading into Alaska for the long week. Overlooking Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, daily evaporation rains continue this week. As well, India and Sri Lanka. Watch for two low-pressure systems to be invading your area. Overlooking Australia. Pretty dry across most of Northern Territory. But Southern regions through Perth and down into Victoria. You're going to see coastal rains pretty much all week heading eastward. New Zealand high pressure ridge moving in for Thursday, Friday. A little bit of rain for Hawaii. No major weather conditions for you. Overlooking South America, daily evaporation rains throughout the continent and then also watching low pressure system that's going to be heading from South America to Antarctica. Watch for that towards the end of the video coming up. No major weather systems heading towards or spinning through Africa. Pretty quiet to say the least through Africa. And very dry through northern parts. I want to thank everybody for watching today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider leaving a like. Maybe share with a friend or family member. I'm going to leave you here looking at the southern hemisphere versus the north. Pointing out the major systems on both hemispheres. Pretty intense system coming off of South America. And as well, big winter storms forming across the northern hemisphere right now. Stay tuned, stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun, and get your morning due. Bye-bye now. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.